we want to start talking about object orientation and how we do object orientation in Scala. Scala is a class-based object-oriented language and what that means is that the code that we write is going to be done in the form of classes. So we should go ahead and look at some code here. Now, what does it mean for something to actually be object-oriented? Well, the simple definition is it means it has objects in it. But what is an object? An object is an entity in a program that contains both data and functionality. And there are actually a number of different ways that you can produce that in a language. The majority of languages that are object-oriented, though, are class-based. And so you write code, you create things called classes that are used to instantiate objects. So let's go ahead and let's make another package. We want to keep all of our code organized for these videos. And I'm going to call it OO Basics. And the example that I want to go through for creating our, our object-oriented uh, you know, program, something that we can look at to help you understand how things work, is I want to create a student class and then a grade book. So we're going to create a student, and then we're also going to create an object that is a grade book. Okay, so we have these two. You'll notice that syntactically they look very similar. We saw the object declaration previously and we saw that if we put a main inside of here, that this will allow this to run as an application. You only put a main inside of an object and the reason for that is at least in part because the objects are singletons that exist on their own whereas classes have to be instantiated the way to think about it is a class is a blueprint it tells the programming language what should go inside of an object and then you can use that blueprint to make instances of it whereas in the case of an object declaration it's actually the full description of both it, it creates it and it says what goes inside of it whereas the class just says this is what's going to go inside of objects and you get to instantiate them we instantiate them with new we'll see how that works in just a second so when we start writing these things we need to think about what is going to go into the class both in the form of as I said an object has data and it has functionality so what type of information should we put inside of our class? Some of this information should probably be passed in from the outside. It should be part of the arguments here. So let's start off. I want my students to have names. So I'm going to make a first name, and that is going to be a string. And I'm going to make a last name, and that's going to be a string. I also want to have some grades for the students. and as we used before. I'm actually going to keep this fairly simple. There will be just three types of grades. Quizzes, which will be stored as a list of ints. Assignments, which will be stored as a list of ints. And tests, which will be stored as a list of ints. And I'm actually going to give all of these default values. Turns out you can do that for class arguments just like you can for method arguments and in fact here let's go if you have a long argument list it is often the style that many people use is to put every argument on its own line like this okay what about methods what type of uh, functionality should go inside of our student well, we can think of different things that we want to do here, but at the very least, we'll just start off. I want to have a function that calculates a an average for the class, or so the average that this student has inside of the class given their their grades. That is a double. Notice I didn't put parentheses here. I can choose whether I want to. If something takes no arguments in Scala, whether I put parentheses or not. Style-wise, the recommendation is if it changes anything, if it mutates, it should definitely have parentheses. 
And if it doesn't, if it could effectively become a, you know, a variable, a data member uh, that's just calculated, then you often leave them off. Okay. We'll come back. I don't know what to put here. Uh, probably the best way to do this is to break this problem into pieces. And so I'll probably have a method for a quiz average, which is a double. I will have an assignment average, which will be a double. And we will have a test average, which is a double. So this kind of shows you the general syntax for laying out a class. Uh, inside of the class we put declarations. You can also put just standalone code. We should probably play with that some. So we'll come back in the next video and we will make this main instantiate our students and we'll see what we can do with our students and add a little bit of an implementation just so you can get a feel for how things work in the object-oriented model.